Um, we run a large farm and college here, a thousand acres of land, and have large use for energy. And we've been looking for the last two or three years at how we could start to reduce our energy bills. I'm down here in Gertie and College today with Mike Pearson and we're installing a 50 kilowatt unit for the farm and college. This is a model customer, he's very heavy energy usage. If there is excess being produced by the turbine and the college isn't able to consume it, we can simply divert that excess through to a heating system, uh, through immersion heaters in buffer tanks, etc. So we'll probably install a 3,000 litre buffer tank to link in with the heating system here. And that buffer, ta buffer tank will act as an energy store. It's incredibly well insulated, it's Austrian manufactured. It loses about one degree in a 24 hour period if it's not being circulated. So there's significant value to be retained through the buffer tank. At the end of the day, microgeneration and all wind turbines are only suitable if the site is suitable. Mike has a very good site here. We've got good wind speeds and good wind speed data collected from the site. So typically in a six month period, you get a good indication. You can run the anemometry for a further six months in parallel with the geotechnical and uh, the planning application. So the geotechnical survey is carried out on the ground for the foundation design. That's an important part of the project. But again, we wouldn't enter into that until we were absolutely sure that the site was suitable. An anemometry, we use industry standard NRG equipment. So the design of the foundations comes entirely out of the geotechnical survey. And what that means is a bore is completed on site and an examination is completed of the ground conditions. That examination is sent off in a survey report back to the Canadians who manufactured the turbine. They will then design a specific foundation for the particular site that we're proposing to put the turbine on. So we're about 35 staff members in the college. Um, we're supporting about 150, 180 full-time students. We run a large agriculture and equine college here and we have huge energy bills with the college, 50,000 a year for electricity, 50,000 a year for heat. And we've been looking for a while at how we could start to reduce these bills and future-proof ourselves. We'd originally looked at a small wind turbine, three to five kilowatts, um, just as a demonstration for students to show what was happening. Um, but as things developed, um, we've, looked, we've now come up with a project with a 50 kilowatts semi-industrial turbine, um, which should supply our base need in the college. It should all the time, we should be able to use all that it produces. The amount that we're saving on the electricity should provide the finance for the loan, so we shouldn't be in a position of having to pay any extra for the next seven or eight years. But after seven years of a loan, we should be in a position to be saving all the money. I mean, it's far enough away from the main buildings not to impact with noise or anything on people, but it's near enough to make it economic in terms of getting the electricity back to the college. And we're very lucky here that we have a windy site. One really important issue for anybody making an investment of this scale is that the return is actually guaranteed by the UK government for 20 years. So when you join the scheme, you're fixed on a particular tariff rate and every year after that it's index linked. So using a typical farm example, you will have three revenue streams. The first one is the UK government agreed feed-in tariff and the tariff that applies to this turbine is 25.3 pence per kilowatt hour produced. The second component is the value saved due to the fact that you're not having to buy that electricity from the grid. And the third component is for any excess electricity that you export to the grid. In the case of the feed-in tariff, at 100,000 kilowatt hours, that equates to 25,300 pounds annually. If we assume that we're offsetting 50,000 kilowatt hours against the farm usage at 10 pence per kilowatt hour, that's £5,000 annually. And if we assume that we're exporting the remaining 50,000 kilowatt hours at three pence per kilowatt hour, that's an additional £1,500. So the total annual return is £31,800 in this example. In this case, we're using 100,000 kilowatt hours because that's what we anticipate the turbine to produce on this site. The life expectancy of this turbine is 30 years and the maintenance is completed twice annually. The capital cost in today's value of this installation is £190,000. So with a yield of 31800 that gives us a payback of about 5.8 years. After the payback period, the turbine will continue to generate 
a strong revenue stream for the remainder of its life. And that revenue stream is index linked and guaranteed by the UK government for 20 years. One of the big advantages that we found with the AOC turbine is that it has a proven track record and has been in the field for about 16 years. This turbine comes in two types, lattice and monopole, and it comes in three different tower heights. You were here, you've seen it go from a green field to a turbine there, and hopefully into the future, um, you know, 30, well, 30 years of students will see that turbine turning. But into the future, folks, you're not just going to be farmers, you're going to be looking on your farms, you're going to be looking on your equine units, you're going to be looking at what you're doing and how you are running your business efficiently, and this might be one way to help. So just on behalf of Gertine, thank you very much everybody for coming today, and thank you for the help we've had up to this point. Thank, thank you, you Mike.